and welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the game and the conversation. This week we have Tom. Uh, who's yelling about the fact that I have some amount of ethics in my body that prevented me from getting free shit. Damn me. Damn your moral code. This is the worst. I didn't know you had ethics. I I have like a modicum of ethics. <laughs> Like a small amount. It's it's not much. It's enough to to add flavor. It's like a bay leaf of ethics. Ah, uh, okay. Well, this ethic was in the advantage of a big company. I thought you, as a communist bastard, would have been all for <laughs> sticking it to it. You know, I I am, but there is an amount of capitalism where I am self interested. And you see, these things generally have a way of coming back on me and causing way more trouble than they're worth. So I can skip some free alcohol and instead uh, just live with the fact that I will pay for the things I acquire, even from large companies. Uh, with the exception of Activision, Blizzard, fuck you, fuck Konami, not paying for your shit, pirate at all, woo, 72 PC official message, go. No. <laughs> Blizzard Just is possibly no. the worst company to try to pirate from because I think all of their fucking IPs anymore are <laughs> internet based. Yes. Yeah. But hey, Konami's free game, not that they make games anymore. It's really nothing to pirate there. Yeah. Yeah, it's nothing. Nothing, nothing. at all. So how's your guys' week been? How's it going? All right, guys. I watched for the first time ever Johnny Mnemonic. So I Johnny Mnemonic, I, I want to say it came out in 1995. It's 94 or 95, starring Keanu Reeves in a cyberpunk future where there's a plague. And his job is to, uh, he's he's a, uh, a runner. Basically, he slots data into his head, like copies it into his brain, and takes it from place to place. Like physically sneaking, at, sneaking data from one place to another. Like it is just peak cyberpunk Keanu Reeves. Nice. Um, like, this thing could be a prequel somehow to The Matrix. Um, so this movie is foundational in the cyberpunk genre. Like, everything from iconography to uh, how the story is laid out to the world building, like, it's very foundational to the entire genre of cyberpunk itself. That said... It is literally one of the worst movies I have ever seen. <laughs> I want to say Rotten Tomatoes has it at a 13. If you go into it, like I went oh. into it and I, I sat down, I watched it. I might have been slightly inebriated because I was like, oh, man, I've been playing games all day. I'm hungry. I'm drinking a little bit. Let's just watch a movie. Oh, here's this thing with Keanu Reeves that I've never seen. Sure. What the fuck? Um, yeah. Ten minutes in, I realized, oh, my God, this is an awful fucking movie. And so I leaned my chair back, I sat here, and I just enjoyed the camp. And oh my god, it was dripping with camp. <laughs> just fucking dripping with camp. At one point, Keanu Reeves goes up to his co-star, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose this Rocket League match because I have to make the hand signals. He says, oh, fine. I, I want to get online. I need a computer. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> amazing it's fucking amazing it is awful but if you want a really cheesy really campy cyberpunk movie that was made in the 90s where cell phones don't exist you gotta check out johnny mnemonic um also what's great is after playing through cyberpunk 2077 yeah a lot of that game is directly or a lot of the missions and iconography is directly influenced from johnny mnemonic uh, which is kind of hilarious because it's just so fucking bad. Mm. That's yeah. funny. I couldn't tell where you were going with that because you described how awful it was. And I was like, oh, that's surprising. Like, I've heard of the movie, <laughs> but I didn't know anything about it. I just knew it was an old Keanu Reeves movie. And for some reason, I thought people thought it was good. Like it's... a good movie. No, and it's then an you important <laughs> movie, but it's okay. a bad movie, I if see. that makes sense. But I hear you describe. I hear you describing it, and you're, and you're like it talking about how so bad it is. And I'm like, all right, so does he he like it or not? Because I I know I, you like campy I stuff. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I love the hell out of it. It is awful. So okay, I went to watch this a second time with Renee. I did it for our date night, and she got about 
80% through and said, okay, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I thought I could hold on. That's just <laughs> not going to happen. I'm, I'm nice. out. Can it. we literally watch anything else? We can watch Dota on Twitch. I don't care. I was like, oh, wow. Okay, so this is this is how you feel about it. I, and you know, frankly, can't blame her. It's an awful movie. But if you want to just laugh, especially, uh, especially now that the world is slowly, kind of, almost, hopefully returning to normal, if we wanted to get together and watch bad movies, um, yeah, you could do worse than Johnny Mnemonic, but probably not. It's really bad. In what way could you do worse? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I was, you said that, you know, it's an awful movie, but it's important. And I'm starting to run through my head. Like, do I know of any movies that I would put like that? Like, I think the movie is awful, but it set the stone for something that was needed and is good. I don't know that I know of any. Um, I'm trying to think like there. Most movies that are good enough to make that kind of impact at the time are good enough to at least stand the test of time a little bit. Like they usually yeah. age, like you can tell maybe, like really old movies, um, some things where you know the acting maybe wasn't as refined as as it typically is now, or or the cinematography or whatever. But usually you can like you can see like oh, okay I still see that this is good. Yeah, yeah. I th I think a like, good example like of that it's is a like little Star dated, Wars. but it's still good overall. Yeah, Star Wars something like that. That makes sense. Like Star Wars, I recently watched the first three, and I might get shit on. I thought they were fine. I think that, you know, there's a lot better stuff out there, but I think that Star Wars is super foundational, absolutely needed. And I love Star Wars. It's just like after rewatching those, like, eh, you know, they, they were okay. They did some cool stuff for their time, but as a t movie of today, they could have done better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I actually, can't think of a bad one, though. Like, I, I can't look and think this is bad, but yep, you know what? This made a lot of good shit happen because of it. I'm going to get shit on for this take. And this is not a hot take. Lots of people have had this. Uh, Avatar. I, that kind of came to mind. Yeah, not Avatar The Last Airbender. Avatar the blue film, the blue people film made by the Titanic guy. Like, <laughs> fuck Avatar and everything about it. Goddamn Fern Gully in space. I really enjoyed it. But then again, I really like Fern Gully. <laughs> Are you hating on Fern Gully? I, I'm not hating on Fern Gully. I just, like, for as much hype as it got, and it's literally just reskinned Fern Gully with really expensive CGI, which did literally set the stage for how to do really good-looking CGI in the modern era. Uh, yeah, I'm hating on it, because what? it's not revolutionary. What it's, is Fern Gully? Or not, not Fern. I mean, I'm talking about Avatar. Avatar setting the bar for like yeah. really good modern CG. Oh, no, I'm Adam asking what is Fern, Fern Gully? Is. I've never even so heard it's of like it. an early '90s movie of um, kind of environmentalist tones. Of there's a lumbering company that's coming through and destroying the rainforest, and one of the trees they mark to destroy has this ancient spirit in it that starts possessing oh. the equipment to destroy the forest faster and faster. Huh. And one of the lumberjack dudes got turned micro, and he's working with fairies and bats to help fight the spirits. Yeah, I. Hmm. That's a really weird description, but I mean that that's pretty much the movie in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. And it's good soundtrack. Like the uh, him, he has a Walkman at the time, of course. And while the guy shrank, the Walkman was the same size, so he uses his headphones as like monster DJ speakers. To play a song and everyone dancing to it, which I thought like the scaling of that was kind of fun. Nice. But yeah. yeah. I, I didn't like Avatar because it was like, it propped itself up on, oh, this is the movie experience of the millennia. And you know, you go to a movie and you expect to see the main thing you care about in the movie is how's the story. Uh, and it's literally just a copy paste. Like there was nothing original about that whatsoever. It was just prettier. Now, there was some, like, for the actual, like you said, the prettier end. Like, they did stuff, man. Oh, my they God. It was stuff. beautiful. Well, it what it did for the TV. Experience. Avatar made the 4K TV industry. Yeah, it did. Like, at the time. Like, it was eventually going to get there. But that's what took it to be, okay, every Sam's Club in the world, you walked in, 4K <laughs> yep. TVs everywhere showing... Avatar. Yeah. 
for sure. Yeah. And it, it was the first one I remember where they had like, uh, it would probably be the effectively uh, 144 hertz, but it's like the real motion stuff where like the body Ooh. seemed detached from the background. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like it, it did a lot of great things technologically. And I would argue that Avatar is an important movie uh, in the grand scheme of filmmaking, but I wouldn't call it a good movie. I think That's it was fair. fine. I don't think it was bad. It was just a little generic, I guess. Generic, yeah. yes. Yeah. Maybe that's a, a better way to put that. Just like, fine. When I think bad just... movie, I think Black Sheep. That's a fantastic It'll... movie. What are you talking about? Wait, are you talking about the... I, yeah, and I know where I know where we're going. I know yep. I think I know which one you're talking yep. about. But um, <laughs> not the Chris Farley David Spade comedy in the '90s. No, um, this the is... New Zealand sheep keeping movie where there is a genetically modified sheep that is going around killing humans, <laughs> and it bites the guy, and he starts turning into a human goat. That is yes. a fantastic movie. Tom, have you seen this, this movie? That's like the best movie in the world. You what haven't you seen Black about? Sheep? No, I haven't. You what need to watch fuck? Black Sheep no right does. now. <laughs> So, oh out of all of us, of you life, need to watch it. You have to. <laughs> at that stage of our life, Adam and I were in a band together, and one of our um, hobbies outside of you know doing other things was to um, go to Blockbuster, walk around, and find the campiest-looking, <laughs> awful movies we could find. Oh, my God. We found one I that was so watching. bad and so campy that it wasn't even like laugh at it and enjoy it. It would just turn it off. Jesus. Was that like Sasquatch Mountain or yep. something like Escape that? Escape from Sasquatch <laughs> yep. Mountain. It was like it was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. It, it's so bad that it's completely repressed from my memory. I don't even remember anything about it. I just remember how bad it was. That's I honestly beautiful. don't remember much about Black Sheep outside of we found. Yeah, it. It was, it's been a while. It it was made campy and not in a way where it was supposed to be funny, and it made it hilarious. <laughs> I I think it was though. It's pretty self aware. I think. I wasn't Johnny, sure, but it's done well. Or not. But then Johnny again, those kind of movies played like one hundred percent straight, and it's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> but then again, I think Adam was getting on a point where I I kind of think that when a movie is self aware enough and you don't realize it, it makes it better. Ooh, <laughs> like sure. um, like a uh, Cabin in the Woods was like that with me. Yeah. Like it took me a little bit to realize what was going on in that movie. Yeah, when I watched I it, love Cabin in the Woods. Uh, yeah, Cabin in the Woods is one of my favorite movies of all time. I think. Um, is that and that one caught me off guard because I didn't know anything about it before I saw it, so I had no idea it was this whole, like, not a standard horror movie thing. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's parody esque, love letter esque. Yeah. Yeah. I love the where they went with that though. That was, that was such a good movie. Excellent. Speaking of horror movies, I watched a I, I think we were were we talking about it on the cast or was I just talking about it with you, Irk, uh twenty eight days later and twenty eight weeks later? Cast. Did, did that make oh, it yeah. okay, that made it to the cast. So I, I went back and watched twenty eight days later this week. Oh. Um it's good. I forgot how kind of bad it looks because it's filmed on an old digital camera, which was kind of intentional at the time, but um, I forgot how like grainy and low res it looks, Ooh. but it kind of fits the the mood of the the movie. So, but yeah, it was still a good movie. I enjoyed it, and then I watched the first like the opening sequence of Twenty Eight Weeks Later. Might be one of the best like ten minutes of horror film ever. <laughs> like I don't. The whole movie was wasn't amazing, but that first bit, which I think was directed by the guy who did the first one. Um, oh my God! It is so so good, and it's it just. I don't goes remember from... much about that. I just remember enjoying that movie a lot. Yeah, twenty weeks, the weeks. Twenty eight weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The opening sequence is one of my favorite opening sequences of any movie, especially horror movies. Like it was just so well done, and I don't well, I don't want to give it away, but <laughs> there's a decision made that you don't normally see in movies that this dude makes, and I appreciated it for that. It's like, well, are we gonna get the cheese pizza or the meat lovers? And he's just like, and he's well, like, nah, dude, we're going veggie. It's like, wait, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> like, who gets a veggie pizza? Yeah. Have you have you seen it, Tom? No. Or uh, yes, but 
forever ago. Yeah. Like, I don't remember anything about it kind of forever ago. Okay. I just remember that these zombies are terrifying zombies. Where most yeah, zombies yeah, 20, are only terrifying yeah. because of the horde nature. Yeah, 28 days and 28 weeks later have by far the most uh, scary zombies in any movie. There's not one movie, I don't think, that <laughs> that is as intense as they are. They're yeah. fast. Yeah. They're they're sprint fast, right? Yes. Literal they're sprinting. Runners. Um, they're obviously just freaking crazy, and they turn almost instantly. So that's cool. And I would argue borderline intelligent in the way that they sort do of. things. Like they they they're not the Walking Dead kind yeah. of mentality. Yeah, because yeah, they're really not zombies. They're just infected with a virus, but they're still alive. Very I, I Am Legend-esque. Yeah, they're still alive. Well, I Am Legend is actually vampires. At least the book was. Like straight really? up vampires. Yep. Ooh, I did not know that. Like they, they In the movie, they show that they're sensitive to the sun yeah. and that it burns them and stuff, but they never mm-hmm. actually... Huh. Yeah. It's interesting. And, yeah, the book was good too, actually. But yeah, I watched that. It was good. Um, Erk, or, uh, Erk, didn't you want to talk about a movie? Are we? Oh wait, we'll wait minute, until we'll wait until Gina. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get um, back to the movie talk. Yeah, I did. However, um, make something I've never done before, you and make? it was, oh, well, kind of something. I was so the game plan was like I went to the store, and I always have this impulse buy, and when I'm at the produce department, like there's going to be some kind of meat that I'm just going to buy. For no fucking reason. Um, so this time I was looking. I'm like, man, they have a lot of beef roasts here. Like top round roasts. I'm like, okay, fuck it. I'm doing it. I've never done it. Um, so what I was going to do was I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make French dip sandwiches out of this. Ooh. Threw it all in the sous vide. Had it all seasoned up. Had it cooking for like 10, 11 hours in the sous vide. And then I realized when I started looking up, like cause my thought was I'm just going to um, drain the juices and do a little bit of this or that, and then blah blah. I'm gonna have that for the dip. Yeah, that doesn't quite release enough juice for the dip. So fuck. Instead, had to make a gravy. So he made like roast beef, like just kind of sliced thin mm-hmm. on toast with the gravy that was made on it on top as sandwiches. Ooh, oh, ha, ha, that was so good. That sounds good. So 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 good. <laughs> you always keep some and then stock I'm, on hand for that occasion. Yeah, I I never have beef stock. I always have chicken stock. Hmm. My beef stock isn't um, used as much, nearly as much. Seems yeah, like. no, I'm not. I cook a lot more bird than I do beef in scenarios where it requires stock. Like, mm-hmm. I do a lot of steaks and stuff like that, but I don't do a lot of, like, pot roast and stuff of that sort. I'm more likely to do a... Um, Chicken fricassee or something like that, where you're needing the chicken broth or even the risotto. Chicken what? Language arc. I, I picked it up from Ramsey and I really, really fucking liked it. Okay. It's effectively like a chicken stew, but it's with like whole piece chicken. With instead of know. being like with vegetables, it's just like mushrooms, like quartered up mushrooms in it. It's really good. Hmm. Very nice. Um. Yeah. It's the first time I ever flambéed something. Nice. <laughs> Did that feel awesome? Yes. After the half second of, did I put in too much of this and I'm going to fucking catch my kitchen on fire? <laughs> just, there was that quick moment of doubt. Of course there was. Like, I love playing with fire, but I typically do it outside. So that, that part was a little unsettling at first. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and then also, uh, Papa John's, I fucking hate you. Um <laughs> I uh, like their stuffed crust a lot, but I find their pizza, when you get the stuffed crust, very floppy. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, I'm going to order well done. So we get our pizza. It's marked well done. I pick it up. I'm hoping I'm going to pick it up like I normally would. And it's going to hold together. I pick it up in wet noodle. Uh, I'm like, what the Was fuck? it actually Nothing cooked well done and this nope. crust just sucks? No, nope. it's just the same. Those motherfuckers like, oh, he wants well done? Well, we're giving him a pizza. <laughs> it's effectively how that conversation went. Maybe he's like, well done, guys. This is a good pizza. 
It was very oh, yeah. well made. It's well made. It doesn't mean that's not what the checkbox means. It doesn't mean that they <laughs> cook well, it well, more. See, it means we that it, they make it you, better. <laughs> we were gonna give you a shitty pizza, but yeah. you said well done. So now we've got to actually put some effort in. Yeah, we're gonna make this one a little nicer, evenly spaced. So we're not gonna make, give you a uh, no pizza beef half. <laughs> None pizza, None left, pizza beef. left beef is one of my favorite things I've ever seen. In my there, life. there we go. There it is. I was like hyena laughing to myself the first time I saw that. <laughs> that is one of the best things to ever come off of 4chan. <laughs> that and Mr. Bones Wild Ride. Those yep. two got me. Oh just my rolling. god! <laughs> I want to get off Mr. Bones Wild Ride. <laughs> oh Dude. man! Um, I, I, I had a. I had tandoori chicken for the first time today. Ooh, man, we I was impressed. Yes, yeah. I, I got it kind of apprehensively because the the first time I ever went to an Indian restaurant actually was with Irk in Seattle. And um, I got something decent. It was, uh, I think it was like Vindaloo or something. <clears throat> Irk got this chicken that it didn't have like a gravy or a curry or anything with it. Like it was just like seasoned chicken or whatever. And it's kind of dry. And I find mm. that the, the kind of spices they use in Indian food, it's like dry chicken is so much worse than most dry chicken with those spices because it just sucks all of the moisture out of your mouth. Like something about yeah. just that particular flavor combination, I think really needs some sort of like liquid or like cream or something to kind of, I don't know, put it all together. It needs a sour mouth. does not yeah, you need something to have your mouth need not a be a desert afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I got it tentatively. So I got sog paneer like I normally get, and then I got this too to try and you know make a few meals out of it. And then I started eating this tandoori chicken, and oh my god, I was very impressed at how good it was. It's basically just half a chicken, cut into quarters or whatever, um, okay. that they cook in one of those tandoori like the big clay ovens, and it's marinated. With like a yogurt marinade with a bunch of spices and other stuff in it. So it was actually, it wasn't saucy like a curry, but it like a lot of the marinade was still on the outside of it. Nice. Um, in the thing. And there was uh, onions and peppers and like I said, the leftover marinade. And it was so good. And they served it with two slices of lemon, which kind of caught me oh. off guard. But oh. I squeezed the lemon on one of the pieces and it just, it took it up a notch. It was so good. It was this like refreshing citrus, just kind of brought it all together. It, it, um, it, it didn't taste lemony, but it just kind of lifted the whole thing. Hmm. And it was a it was a flavor combination I didn't think would be very good with like the Indian food kind of spices, but it worked perfectly. And yeah, I'm gonna be ordering that again for sure. So I never understood the lemon pepper wing thing that was going on at B-dubs and all that shit. Never got it. And then one day I finally had lemon pepper with chicken and then it clicked. Yeah, lemon pepper is good. Because like to me, lemon pepper was always like it's fish. Like that is why lemon pepper existed was for fish. And now I'm starting to see like "Uh, that's pretty fucking good on chicken too. Yeah. I love lemon pepper (laughs) on literally anything. (laughs) So it was... It was good enough that I got garlic naan and I ate all of my tandoori chicken and then I put the rice in the bowl with the leftover marinade and onions and was eating that and I got full and I forgot I had garlic naan, which is God something that doesn't happen because I, I love garlic naan. <laughs> no, no, I didn't even eat it. I had it like an Dude. hour later. It's still sitting here, actually. I had it like an hour later as a snack. Gina is not I'm a fan of Indian, Indian. food. So I do not get Indian food often at all, unless it's like a potluck at work, which I love that because dear God, oh we had God, we used to have yes. some really good cooks on my team. Nice. So we had excellent Indian food. Uh, but, yeah, just a big Renee's fan. in the same in the same boat. She also doesn't like Indian food, but tonight I'm probably gonna order some Indian food. Nice. It's, it's been a while. So I don't know how this works. If you DoorDash and you get like two different places, like, will they bring them at the same time? Or no, I usually work? get two different drivers. We've done that a lot. So when I'll get Indian food, Renee will get spaghetti or something. Um, but yeah, it's usually two different drivers and they're not going right. to double up like that. It, just two whole different orders. That was yeah. also, um, 
we door dashed Papa John's because since we had a dash pass, it's cheaper to get Papa <laughs> John's through DoorDash because you don't get their $10 delivery fee that oh. doesn't even go to the fucking driver. Nice. Yeah. I, wait, uh, like, does uh, it actually let you get from two different places and then send yeah. two drivers? Because yeah. every time I've had something uh, like like put in my cart and then I decide I want a different restaurant, I just add that to my cart and it removes the last one. Like it'll so only you have take... to... You have to submit the first order and then go back and submit another order. Oh, I see. Oh, no, that, that's what he was yeah. asking. You have to do it as two different orders. You're not yeah, doing it as a single orders. order. Yeah. 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 yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. So I think we stalled enough. If she doesn't have it on at this point, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so with an anime release that is we're going to talk about later in the show, um, Gina and I made a deal that I'm going to watch this movie with her, and then we are going to watch this anime together. And the movie that she wanted to watch, she hadn't seen it yet, but was Warcraft, because she's a big WoW person. So we decided to watch Warcraft. And for those of you who don't know, this movie got panned. I mean, like, critics, it's like a 22 on Rotten Tomatoes. So, yes, Tom, we're both in the camp of watching bad movies. Yep. <laughs> um, and there are some stuff in this movie, or there was some stuff in this movie where it's like, man, if they just proof-watched this, they would have fixed a lot of the issues. <laughs> like, at one point... um. Someone refers to the planet as Earth, which I thought was kind of like took me out a little bit. Like, come on, this is an Earth. Don't, don't do that kind of shit here. Um, there was some bad editing where like Gene and I had to rewind to actually understand what just happened because oh. the perception of the camera made it just like a snap. And there was no grace period for the <laughs> viewer to understand what had just happened. Um, but... All that said, that movie is not as bad as people panned it out to be. I actually enjoyed it. It was be- it's not great. I think it can be considered possibly a bad movie just because how poorly edited it was. Mm. But if you like, I mean, it was enjoyable. Um, like she was, and especially the way I view it, like it, I found it okay to watch as someone who doesn't give a shit about Warcraft, and someone who did enjoy Warcraft was geeking out about it. Because, like, there was stuff that she noticed, she saw, she knew. I think that's about as good as they could have asked for. Is that their diehards enjoyed some of the aspects of it, and that someone who doesn't care about it didn't hate it. I don't know where all the fucking hate about that movie came from, though. I really don't. Like, to get a 22 on Rotten Tomatoes, like, that's fucking brutal. I expected to go into this and laugh at it like a B film. And it wasn't that bad. But okay. Editing I'm glad you liked it. make or break a movie. So um yeah. So the the highest rated Star Wars movie, Empire Strikes Back, right? Episode five, um, was actually a completely different movie before it hit the editing floor, and they ended up like uh, essentially pulling back uh, George Lucas, who was just going crazy, uh, and making the movie into something that was palatable. So, yeah, I can understand how bad editing will absolutely tank something because it can absolutely make something. Oh, I, I think that with proper editing, this would have been considered a good movie. Oh, well, actually, I shouldn't say good. Some of the dialogue was, like, on-the-nose, cliche mm. kind of stuff. But I don't think the <laughs> editing was bad enough to, like, ruin the movie. Okay, so... uh in Johnny Mnemonic, Keanu Reeves, after he takes out a guy, says, nice try, Baldy. But not like I'm joking and I know this is a really bad line. Like, it was super serious and ham-fistedly delivered and like, oh, yeah, this will get him. Nice try, it's Baldy. So a non-aware bad. Duke Nukem <laughs> exactly. is what I get from that. It was so bad. <laughs> oh, my God. I loved every moment of it. Um, okay, oh, Relentless and, is and... in chat with me real quick. I got to call that. Yeah, Relentless. I agree with you 100% that if it was remade, it could actually be really fucking good. Um, Go ahead, Tom. So there is, don't, if you're going to watch Shining Mnemonic, one of the best things you could do is not look up who's in the movie. Don't look up anything about it. Just watch it. It's awful. You're going to love it. Because <laughs> I didn't, I went into this completely blind. 
and somebody shows up in the movie. I'm like, wait, is that? Oh my fucking God. And I made Renee stick around to watch the movie until we got to that part because she had the exact same, what the fuck are they doing in this movie? <laughs> reaction that I had. It oh. was one of the the best, like, not expected, here's an actor that shouldn't be in this genre, let alone this movie. Uh, kind of scenarios, and it was, was it was oh, just goddamn beautiful. Was, was this actor already established? <laughs> Dwayne uh, the Rock Johnson at the time. <laughs> I mean, mm, I mean, no, at the I time, Keanu know. Reeves wasn't really Keanu Reeves. True. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no this this person is a known quantity, though. I'll, I'll put it that way. At that era, it was already. Yeah. Okay. For entirely okay, that... different reasons. No, that's fine. I was just making sure, yeah. like, this wasn't a situation of. Like there's Here's someone I can't that became someone later. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's not like fucking Ian McKellen. Like it's not what I would consider like a great actor or anything. Like it's not that kind of surprise. It's just a completely unexpected out of left field, what the fuck are they doing here kind of situation. <laughs> well, it's like Gina recognizes that Bernadette from Big Bang Theory was in fucking uh True Blood. And it's like, hold on, this doesn't what? <laughs> These characters don't jive with me. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Was so, it yeah. Was it Bernadette from <laughs> it, it was not Bernadette. <laughs> Bernadette should have been a cyberpunk movie. She would have been like what, twelve years old for that? <laughs> uh anyway. So yeah. uh games. Games. No, we gonna talk about it? some games. No. Here, no? I'm gonna start it off just because I always think this... protest every time we get to this part. I do. Yeah, he does. This is possibly gonna be a long section. Um, it's gonna be some video games, some anime, uh, some stuff that a lot of people won't necessarily want to hear, but we're talking about it. It's Dota. Dota. No, no. So, um, Dota. It's gonna be talked about here because a, I've been playing it and it's been going well, great because Witch Doctor is a fucking beast. But more importantly, um, they had an anime drop two days ago. Brand new anime on Netflix. Um, all eight episodes are out. Um, I've actually been hearing that it's pretty well done. Uh, Tom, I think you've actually watched some of it, and you can speak mm -hmm. to that part aspect. Yeah, but it's it's definitely well done. Uh, just, just to let you know, if you are a parent and a Dota fan, and you're like, oh, hey, cool, I can share the Dota cartoon with my kids. Unless your kids are over the age of 18, please don't. Um, <laughs> you're you're going to cause some nightmares. You're going to cause probably some good old-fashioned childhood scarring. Um, yeah, it is It is not a show for children. It is hyper-violent. Uh, there's actually uh, an amount of almost nudity, like as close as you can get. Um, like there's... There's a lot of fucked up shit that happens here. Uh, it's cool, it's good, but it is not for children. So uh, yeah, don't don't let the animated nature fool you. Okay, if animated nature gets you, you <laughs> are going to fail as a parent because for the love of God, animes are almost never for kids. You no, know, no. <laughs> there, there are exceptions, but but like even DBZ had some stuff with Master Roshi, where like that dude was that dude not was a PG. Creep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was. Well, well, that and like the unedited versions had some like mild nudity in it too, and, and, some, oh, and more um, blood violence. And stuff that, than... More violence that didn't make it to America. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. So with the launch of this new uh, anime, Dota realized, you know what? We ripped our tutorial out of the game like six years ago and never put anything back in it. Our new player experience has been dog shit, and our player base is beginning older and older because we can't get new players in. So let's not do anything about it until we have an anime. So finally, Dota has given us a new player experience to help new players get into Dota. And this isn't just like some walkthrough tutorial. It is, let me do the math, 32 different um, actual exercises slash um, campaign kind of stages to go through, ranging from demo a hero from how to last hit all the way up to like doing denies how to stack how to pull not what i want to call advanced techniques because i think even just like bad players know how to do this 
but techniques that are fundamental to Dota that you wouldn't get from just playing the game without someone teaching you. Mm -hmm. So they are doing a lot of teaching here. And they brought back limited uh, limited draft for new players where they have a mode where new players go in, play against other new players, only new players, with a very limited amount of heroes that they're allowed to play with. And if anyone queues into that mode with a the party, they're automatically put against bots so that they can't wreck new players. Mm -hmm. So they're doing a lot of really good stuff to get new players in. And so they've reworked the shop. This thing is huge. Like, it won't impact me because at this point, I know the shop. But there's like a hundred and some items in Dota. There are a ton of items that do all sorts of different shit. And if you're a new player looking at the shop, it'll spend you an entire game to figure out like three items to buy yeah. and how to buy them. Easy. So what they do now is they have a different type of shop where everyone chooses a guide. And based on that guide, instead of showing you an entire shop, it shows you this is the next item you're going to buy. This is the next item you should buy. And Dota has been uh, working on these guides based off of their Dota Plus for the last couple of years. So now they're actually rolling this out for everyone. And new players can actually just turn on this advanced shopping mode where it just tells them what to buy. So new players only have to worry about playing their hero and not about what they need to do in the shop. Yeah. Which is huge. It is, that is really fucking cool. Um, it's actually way better than League's onboarding. And during the games, new players will actually get like fucking MS Word Clippy style tooltips saying, hey, look, all the other team, you can't see any of them on the map. They're all missing. They could be anywhere and you are crossing the river. This is fucking dangerous. Um, people on the Dota 2 subreddit were saying, hey, is there a way to just enable this for everyone because my team it is. is getting killed? <laughs> it is by default. Um, I was going to tell you, it's okay. actually not wow, new. Nice. It is everyone. All right. That's great. It's, it's annoying at times, too, because like there's this item called a stick. And uh, when people use magic around you, you get a charge on your stick. And then you can use these charges to heal. So it's just like a healing item. And I got disabled. And I'm spamming the button to use my stick, but I die before I can get it off. And the game's like, you had charges on your stick. If you use the charges on your stick, it would give you health to help you stay alive. I'm like, motherfucker, I was trying to do it the entire time. I was disabled. Get off my ass, Clippy. Because like Tom said, this thing is just like Clippy from MS or from old Windows. It's like a little tool tip that comes up at the top, and it's a little wizard that is just polished enough to look like a Clippy kind of um, tool system. Or... um. What was the gorilla that people used? Oh, oh my god. Bonsai man. buddy. Yep. Fucking bonsai, bonsai buddy. buddy. Weren't there a lot of viruses that attached to that? Oh, that people got? Yeah. yeah. Oh, bonsai yeah. buddy was the devil, man. It was one of the first legit spywares. <sighs> but yeah, so um, I just wanted to bring up like Dota 2, if you were ever thinking about it, this is legitimately a great time to look at getting into Dota 2. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of influx of new players because of the anime and their new player experience right now is better than it's ever been and probably better than any MOBA has ever been. Yeah, it is Valve far, actually, far better than League, far better than Heroes of the Storm. Like It is straight up one of the best new player experiences you can get. Valve has put serious resources into getting this right. And from and what I've seen so far, they're right. It's it's even better than that because they understand Dota changes and Valve is really fucking slow at almost everything they do. So they enable the community to also add on to this if things, you know, get upvoted enough. So the community has been secretly, not so secretly, uh, working on their version of tutorials and missions. And guess what? That shit is now officially added and supported in the new player experience and in the training. So... If uh, if stuff ages out poorly and, and Valve's little official tutorials don't keep up with the times, you know the community is going to, and there's a whole lot more potential hours in community content than there are in, like, official sanctioned by, by Valve content, right? Like, Valve has got to pay people to make this stuff, and only a few hundred people work at the company. There's, you know, millions of people who play Dota 2 who would be interested in building this type of content. So, uh... 
yeah, the community is going to keep this stuff up, and it's now officially sanctioned and showcased on the tutorials page. This, as I would long, argue, that's even bigger. As long as it maintains a curation where it always gets surfaced main in game, because you cannot rely on new players to go to workshop. That'll never work. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's part of the, uh, like, official training pack page. Which, yeah, but when I saw that, dude, that, it's, I'm so fucking pumped about this. Maybe they now we stop their... getting shitbirds. Yeah, no. It's Dota. Um, but also, um, <laughs> they announced uh, the next patch, uh, 729, is going to come with a new hero. So, like, Dota is, like, rocking out the heroes, man. We're about to get another. So, fuck yeah. I'm not, I'm not putting any spoilers in here. The anime just came out. But this anime was not a story valve doesn't actually care about any of that uh, which is a lie i know they give a major shit about it uh but honestly the anime is just a ploy to build the abilities of seven new heroes that they are going to add to the game seven's an exaggeration but yeah there's like four potential heroes that come out of this anime I think that the actual word was that four heroes they were going to add this year, but I also heard the Hoodwink got lumped into that, and I think Hood technically came out in November, but that's just being nitty. I yeah. yeah, this the anime has got new characters that actually like one of them I want to play, and I'm like thinking about that ability spread. I'm like, God damn, that would be fun. That's a weird way to play. And then others, I'm like, oh, Jesus, fuck. I don't really want to play against that hero. This hero is going to be straight up goddamn cancer the entire time. And techies. you know they're going to add that that next one. Oh, no, techies. it's worse than Techies. Techies is the worst hero in any, or character in any I, game ever. I Changed will tell mind. you. I will tell you that, uh, yeah, the, the new heroes that they're going to build. One of them, if it's based on the character in this anime... I, I I would quit the game. That's an exaggeration. Oh. I wouldn't quit the game. It's Phantom Lancer mixed with Ricky. Scott, I can't think of anyone. I can't think of someone from the anime that would be worse than Techies. Uh, we we had a Techies game uh, last night, and uh, I thought he was going to throw his like headphones through the monitor or something. <laughs> oh, so an average Techies game. Got it. No, because this was actually a decent techies player, which is obnoxious because when they're on your team, they're always fucking trash. When they're against you, they know how to fucking lay mines and jungles. Blinks, illusions, and invisibility? Nah. Fuck. Fuck everything about that character. Oh. Yeah. But, but they're, either way. They're going to get added to the game. That, that, that's all I really needed to say about Dota. I wanted to just call out, like, this new player experience is great. If you've ever thought about it, fucking do it now. Now's the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all I got on um, that. Has anyone got any games that they're wanting to get into? Uh, yes. Mine are, mine are all small shit after that. Uh, I have been playing Strand-type games. Hey. Me Still too, actually. It? Uh, yeah, so, uh, Adam, I did get to the part with the bike, where that's pretty prominently featured in a couple <laughs> missions. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can Skyrim horse. <laughs> you can Skyrim horse with the motorcycle. <laughs> you can absolutely Skyrim horse. Um, I, the human enemies are just annoying. I hate yeah. them. Um, Have you gotten anything have, to deal with them yet? Like tools, uh, specifically? Not really, no. Okay. It's still still super early on. I mean, I got okay. I got the strand, so I can death strand them. I I don't know what well, you can the tie fuck. them up. I yeah, it's just call it a rope. Please just call it a rope. <laughs> they, call so it a, they call it a rope a strand. It's, it's like it's, they call yeah. it a strand, and it's made yeah. with your blood because the BTs with the BEs and the BBs <laughs> on the beach <laughs> will incapacitate the BT BBs. Uh, who are also muling the BTs on the beach with the BB. I hope what you're saying actually doesn't, doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. No. okay He's just good. using the, the death stranding <laughs> buzzwords. And, I don't know. I, I was hoping so. Otherwise, if that actually made sense, for the love of God, but, this game is incomprehensible. I, okay. They, they literally do go into details about how the rope uses your blood in a strand to 
I hurt people or something. I don't fucking know. Us it ties learn. people up. It's fine. <laughs> I hit it, 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 uh, I will say it's though, the blood rope. Yeah. Later on though, you do unlock some stuff that makes dealing with the human enemies easier. Shotgun. Uh, spe- Bang. I mean, you're not far off. It's <laughs> it's a gun, but I'm pretty sure it probably shoots like blood bullets or something. I don't know. Okay. Or poop bullets. Or um, crypto biomes. <laughs> something like that. Uh, but no, there are some tools that make that a little easier. But but yeah, I, I do agree. I don't like the encounters with the, the human enemies. I pretty much will just make my trip longer just to go around those encampments, like really far mm-hmm. around them, so I don't have to deal with them. Yeah. I will say the lost cargo system is kind of cool. Yeah. And there's... There's a not small part of me that feels really good after I deliver some lost cargo. Like, I know it it literally makes no difference at all, right? I am delivering non-existent pieces of virtual data from one fake location to the other. But there is an, a, a part of me that's just like, oh, man, Bob couldn't get his shit across the river. Well, I mean, it's it's basically on the way. So I'm like, I'll take it. And then... Like, I'll fall over and I'll lose Bob's cargo. And I've got the one thing I need. And I'm like, ah, all right, I guess I got to float down the river and grab Bob's cargo. Because, like, I don't want to pick it up and then lose it. Like, that sucks. Oh, hey, bud, I'll complete your delivery. No, I won't. It's gone forever. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I've been spending time collecting and shipping lost cargo containers. So in Death Stranding, if you fail a mission, if you drop your cargo or abandon it, it can become lost cargo in other people's games. So as you're walking along or sometimes, uh, and I'll I'll get to this here in a second, uh, sometimes you can go to a place and actually select, hey, give me the lost cargo. So you're like, you'll, you'll pick shit up and you'll just go complete the mission for them. And you get some likes for that because you're paid in likes because Facebook runs the world of Death Stranding. Um, (laughs) You can also, if something is a massive pain in the ass, and you're like, look, I'm not going to deliver it out into the boonies. I'm going to get it closer, but that's it. You'll get partial credit. You can say, okay, here's this shit. It has to go over here. Uh, But what I've done is I've put it like here. It's kind of like halfway in between where it needs to go and where it was. So it counts its credit, right? They'll be like, yeah, somebody else will grab it. And there's a lot of these partial deliveries that I've been picking up, which is really kind of neat. Uh, and I've been upgrading people's structures, which also feels great. But, yeah, You walk over, some guy's got a bridge. You're like, oh, cool, I've got some metal. Bang, here we go. Here's some some crystals. This thing now protects against time fall. Awesome. Everybody yep. benefits. Uh, and you can, you can also fabricate equipment and throw it in a share locker. So if somebody yeah. is poor, if they need stuff, like I have gotten myself out of jams, like hardcore jams, like, oh shit, this package has got like 10% like integrity remaining. I'm I'm gonna fucking flunk this. I I have I have no ability to to protect myself or to get this thing where it needs to go without busting it open. And then I look in the share locker and somebody's put like four cans of container repair spray in there. It's like, God damn, thank you. Uh, and so perfect. I've been doing the same thing. Like if I've got extra resources, you know, I'll generate some PCCs and some ladders and some climbing gear and container repair and just chuck it in that locker because maybe one day somebody else will need it. It's like it's like how Dark Souls multiplayer and in, like incentivizes the- <laughs> you to be a fucking asshole Death Stranding's multiplayer incentivizes you to just help people. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Altruism is a, a feature of the game. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things that's about really, it. That's really... I mean... That's really cool. I it's, love the fucking social shit about this game. Yeah, it's, 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 really it's nice. Neat. It's cool. And really, there's no actual incentive to do any of it. You're doing it because yeah. you know it helps somebody. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, like, you get some I, I likes. Looking, You'll get some I likes. I was looking at the likes, <laughs> and it's like it's not a lot. It's a pittance, honestly. But I feel good. Yeah. You're doing and it you for know the what? likes. I, I was going on a mission uh, the other day, and it would have been easier with the Skyrim horse bike. And guess what? In the shared locker was somebody's Skyrim horse bike. So I took it. And it was nice. <laughs> like I'm glad that guy did that. That's awesome. And, but you, um, but you taking that means no one else can, though, right? Uh, probably, yeah. 
unless they find yeah. it laying around. But maybe next time so I'll put one in there, you know? I That's also another cool can, aspect of it, though. Mm-hmm. It's like, you can be altruistic and mad something, but as soon as one person decides to take it, your altruism is done. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, you did help out that one person. Yeah. And yes. honestly, every time I look in share lockers, I think there's been one instance where I look in a share locker in an actual, like, structured location, not just a random post box, where it was empty. Like, there is always shit in there because most people add stuff and very few people take it. Like, it's it's this grand experiment into can altruism work in a multiplayer video game where there are no consequences for, you know, emptying the take-a-penny jar. And turns out the majority of players that I've seen, at least so far, are leaving the pennies and not taking them. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's, that, it's that's a really good analogy. Yeah. Yeah, it's all the little things like that. Like uh, you can put in a like a build order, basically. Like, hey, it'd be really nice mm-hmm. if this road was here, <laughs> and people can can uh, you know, submit their supplies to help build the road. And I I remember spending a day just doing that because it would be super convenient to have this highway that just runs from the main city down to the city, you know, really far down south through a couple of those human camps that are annoying guess what now there's a big highway that goes through those things and i can take the skyrim horse bike and just zoom down the road halfway down there it's awesome so um do they set the prices to do that kind of stuff high enough where one person can't do it alone and it requires you can it'll take more trips and stuff though i mean some things are a decent like a pretty decent amount of supplies well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it'd be a really cool social experiment. Like, you want that highway? It would take one person a month of grinding resources to do it. So we're going to require, like, it's going to enforce the fact that you need a lot of people trying to help. Otherwise, it won't happen. Depends on how long you want the road to be. Because when you build a road, it's like a little segment of road. It's not like a okay. road from this place to this place. It's like... Oh, so you're building a segment yeah. by segment. For you're building resources. it like yeah. 100 meters at a time or whatever. So each person could probably get enough resources for one segment. The idea is that you need a lot of people to be building segments. Um, Yeah, yes and no. I mean, you could just make a bunch of trips, but it would take a while. I'm not sure how long it would actually take to build a sizable road by yourself in Death Stranding, but I don't know. It's enough where I, I mean, and it's something that everybody that is in that whatever server or however they group people up together like that uh, everybody can benefit from it so that's cool one thing um one thing that i really like about the game and i i just didn't think about it until i encountered it was just dirt path roads Like, they're not impressive. They don't do anything to you. They don't recharge your bike. They don't protect you from anything. They're literally just changing the textures on the ground. Mm -hmm. And it made a huge fucking difference because there was this place. It was a pretty mountainous region. I needed to get up to this this one location. And I didn't know, like, I'm in a bike. I could try to Skyrim horse my way up, but it was kind of not working in this one particular spot. So the fuck do I do? And somebody had laid out just these dirt paths snaking their way up the mountain. So I just followed that and it was perfect. And it would like, somebody literally had to go in and uh, like uh, select, here's where I want to build these roads and literally lay it out piece by piece to show me, okay, this is how you snake your way up here. This is where the place is. And well, it think- was, it was great. I think some of the dirt paths um, just kind of happen if enough people take the same route. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. I think it's like a footsteps thing. I don't think that's something that you oh, build. Oh, that is so fucking cool. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I followed the same path everybody else did and it got me through and it was amazing. It was. You guys are going to make me buy this fucking oh game. Oh my you know that, God. Right? It is. Okay. It's Death just, Stranding it's... is a weird, weird ass game, but yeah. like, it's chill. It's really chill and it's also tedious though. Yeah. But it has the stuff to make up for it, I think. If you can just chill out and enjoy it. I I mean some people would find this game just excruciatingly boring and tedious and annoying. Mm-hmm. Um It's fetch quest the game. That's it. Dude, I, that's the whole I, I dig no 
I dig No Man's Sky. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I think you, I think you would and, like it. Specifically. Yeah, it's it's very much. But, a um, game. it's a chill out I mean, Sunday. The, have your coffee game. The story is just like <sighs> presented incredibly well cinematically, but is just a, a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> yep. Um, like the game is a mess, but it's also really polished and really well done, uh, and it's beautiful. Oh my god! It's playing gorgeous. it again at 1440p. The game runs perfectly, and it is gorgeous. Man, I forget you kept sending screenshots. Yeah. And I was like, "Fuck, oh, that's pretty." Like, not even it just the even graphical fidelity, animation. which is amazing. The graphic fidelity is great, but just the landscape and the the lighting and the mountains and it's also like not even. It's not even that like overly sunny bright vibrant you know outside open world that you see in in a lot of games like far cry or something or probably bits of red dead redemption 2 like most of the time death stranding is overcast but the Ooh. the environment and the scenery and the mountains everything is just so nice it still looks good i uh you sent uh, some pictures that made me wonder in 15 years are we going to look back at this and it's gonna so for about the last two decades we've been to the point of graphics where we keep getting oh this is photorealism and then you know five years later no really it wasn't we just kind of were excited Mm -hmm. does it are we actually getting to the point where we're getting almost photorealistic on some of this shit certain things are getting close-ish yeah like tarkov in places can look that good but the thing that separates like just photorealistic graphics to well aging photorealistic graphics is um art style and that's something where i would argue that most modern AAA games even if they're beautiful aren't necessarily hitting the mark on right it's they they don't have the the cohesiveness of an art style to tie it all together death stranding feels like one completely unique uh, world where all the textures, models, interface, like everything about that game is pristinely put together. I, it all just, it fits, it's cohesive is the, the best way I can put it. So uh, do you think that like though five years from now we're going to look back at it and still think it's as pretty? I, I think we'll think it, it's it's beautiful, but I don't know if it'll like age up that way. I mean, you can I don't still think it's look... Gonna look like GoldenEye. Like, it's not going to look like an N64 game by any yeah. means. Well, yeah, the N64 not... games were awful. Yeah. Yeah. But that was also a long time ago. You know, when N64 games yeah. came out, you thought they looked awesome. Um, but no, I mean, it has... You can you can zoom the camera in on some of the rock textures and they look washed out or, you know, low res or whatever. Um, like, there's going to be stuff that ages poorly. It's a game that's supposed to look like real life. Um, but no, I mean, b- between the lighting and like the textures are good enough. The lighting is fantastic and just the environmental design is fantastic. Also, it's not completely realistic. It- it's got some goofy ass shit, especially in the animations. Like Norman Reedus, the way he is animated, isn't here's 100% realistic. Like he will make goofy, almost cartoon esque facial expressions at some points um and it it just kind of fits into the world um it's a little jarring the first time you see it but then you understand that the game is going for mostly realistic but they will exaggerate for comedic effect at some points Uh, yeah yeah that makes sense oh look you go tom hey that that is unfortunate that There's is an some... unfortunate goal. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Uh, There's been uh, some BMing going on on that team. Yeah. And that there dude has was been. the and that dude has been the dude driving it. So <laughs> it, it's kind of poetic justice that he accidentally owned uh, goals and then just rage quits. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Sorry, audio listeners, um, we got off topic a little or we shit, got a little derailed by the the game we're playing by the way we play games during these podcasts you should join us can i call out physically that 
didn't make sense the way that ball moved, by the way. I, it, like, that fucker no skyrocketed. But, either way. Yeah. Um, so, Death Stranding. It's there. It's a thing. You guys are digging it. Yeah. I chilled, on it. Yeah. chilled out on it at least a few hours this week. Same. Oh, Adam, I see you have a game on your list that I thought I was looking at Tom's list. No. You started it. Yeah, I did. I started Half-Life Alex. Um, I don't have a lot to talk about yet, though, because I really just did the beginning kind of tutorial spot, and it's stuff I've already watched Tom play. Um, but no, I actually finally did dive in and played the first, I don't know, 30 minutes, maybe an hour tops. Right. Um, it seems like it's going to be really good. There there are a lot of noticeable things. You said, like, the, the polish of it in general is just way above most of the other VR stuff I've checked out so far. Um, all the way down to just grabbing objects. Um, you grab a bottle and you don't just grab the bottle the same way every time. Like you can grab the top of the bottle or the middle part or hold it by the bottom. Um, just little things like that. The first time I ever saw Tom play and saw that you could like put stuff in a box and then just carry the box around with a bunch of stuff in it. Like, that seems so trivial, but in games, that's just not something that really happens that much, especially not in the actual physics-based way it is yeah. like that. Um, so so that, that kind of stuff is cool. There's just a lot of little details, and I'm noticing a lot of the little game design things they put at the beginning to encourage you to interact with certain things and check things out. Um, that, that's been a treat so far. Um, I, it's, so, how's it run for you? I have a coworker who's interested in Alex, but he has a quest. So how's it run? I mean, it's running off my PC. It just the video is encoded and streams through the the oh, link sorry, cable. You just do the stream, so, don't you? Yeah. No, I mean either way, that's how you have to play it. Unless I don't know if it's on the actual quest no. store. I don't think it so. It won't be. Yeah. It won't be. But no, um, but I mean, like the quest, like it's just streaming it so like the quest for it it makes no impact as long as your pc handles it uh, as far as i can tell yeah okay yeah it feels fine all right um there there were i don't know if it was because of how i was standing but there were a couple moments where it seemed like the head tracking wasn't exact and it was almost like just slightly like barely slightly moving a little bit when I wasn't moving, like it was trying to figure out exactly Ooh. where my head is, and it that got a little bit um, nauseating. A little bit nauseating. But it was it was a it was the part at the beginning where you can draw for the first time on the glass, and I was like really close to the glass, so I don't know if it was something to do with my player model was kind of at the edge of a boundary, or or what it was exactly. I'm not sure. It it happened a little bit off and on, but not a lot. Other than that, boundary though, breaking in VR sounds dangerous if you're even halfway sensitive to your stomach. <laughs> all of a sudden, that... you know, you just clip through, clip through, clip through, bam, you're slingshot all the way across. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, um, the only thing I don't like is the, the while the grabbing stuff is super cool and and nice and probably better than most other games there is a little bit of that like snap that happens when you grab something so i was trying to pick up this it was just like a platter that had like teacups on top of it and i was going to pick up the whole platter without moving the teacups but when i grab it with the left hand it kind of snaps to a position and then they they fall off the platter or whatever mm -hmm. so there's a little bit of getting used to how the objects kind of snap into your hands once you decide to grab something and how it sort of changes the rotation of, of the object. Um, but I, I think that's just going to be a matter of getting used to it. But overall, it the, the controls to... seem nice. Uh, the game looks really nice. And the I, I love playing, for the, this is the first time I've done this, playing a story-driven experience in VR. Just with the added immersion of that, I, it, I'm really getting into it already. So I'm looking forward, looking forward to continuing it on more. I don't know if I've played anything story driven wise. Like I had Vanishing Realm, but there's not really a story there per se. Yeah. It was cool. I mean, there's a part where you, you get into the elevator and you're waiting on it and then the doors open 
and then there's like the city guards on the other side and he's got his gun pointed at you and it took me it kind of caught me off guard because in any other game that's just like a thing that happens all the time but in vr like seeing a gun pointed at me point blank for a split second i was like whoa wait <laughs> that's like a, because you get immersed in it and you can actually feel that a little bit like it feels uncomfortable to have a gun pointed at you when you're actually immersed in the world a little bit like that and yeah it's just little stuff like that is cool um it tells you to put your hands up and you put your hands up and i and i remember like dropping my hands down and he's like no put your hands up get your hands back up and i was like wow <laughs> the um so game devs are like they're right now in this moment where VR experiences are kind of kind of where games were I want to say around the PS2 era maybe maybe the Genesis era cuz there have been a couple like capstone titles that have changed what you can and can't do in video games right like I'm thinking Mortal Kombat I'm thinking Grand Theft Auto 3 I'm thinking Manhunt like like actual sea changes in what is acceptable to do in a video game. Um, and devs are right now starting to figure that out uh, for VR because it is entirely different, right? Like, oh, you stabbed a player character. Great. Well, guess what? That shit's been happening since the fucking Atari. No one cares. But in VR, like holding a knife to somebody's face is really different. And it makes you feel super fucking different and weird. Uh, the Alex devs were actually talking about a lot of their play testers were afraid of needles and being faced with the fact that there are healing syringes in the game that you actually have to inject into yourself, squidged some people out pretty severely. Uh, and uh, there's no way around that because they said, yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable for these players with a, a needle phobia, but it also means they're way more invested into the world because they're getting the same type of like, bodily this isn't great for me kind of feelings that they would get with regular needles in a virtual environment so it leads to more believability we kept it in yeah, like, it's super it's interesting really cool stuff there was uh, a dev talking about how he was working with a uh, a co-worker on a new vr title and the co-worker was like messed around in the headset and the dev was messing around in the editor it was like taking a knife and moving it towards their face like really close and it freaked them out enough to remove the headset. And they're like, okay, well, here's clearly something we can't do to our players. I mean, you could. <laughs> you could. I mean, it's horror, just I think different horror games are going to push this boundary a little game. bit. Yeah. 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 So this, this is going to require, you know, players to kind of age up with the medium, right? Like getting, going from Mortal Kombat to Grand Theft Auto 3 to Manhunt, it's kind of a logical linear progression, right? We couldn't have jumped right to Manhunt uh, in the Mortal Kombat era, right? For, for several reasons. But one of which is that I, gamers and maybe maybe like parents in society wouldn't have really tolerated that, right? You can't jump right into the boiling water. It's got to be a slow process. Uh, and I think we're going to have to like reacquaint ourselves with that process in VR because not everything's going to be acceptable all the time. Like, for instance, I don't think I would like being decapitated in VR and having my, my viewport roll around, right? That doesn't seem very acceptable to me right now. I was going to ask what happens to your viewport if you get decapitated. That would exactly. be an interesting concept. Yeah, like in five years, is that going to be better? I Probably, most likely, you know, as people get more and more VRC legs and we're used to different experiences, sure. But uh, like playing that tomorrow? No, nah, I'm not, not really into that. Yeah, it'd be fun to see Dive where it life, goes. Alex, you're on it. We'll touch back on that next week because yeah, I am I'm curious gonna... to hear what you think about it because I don't view you as the Valve fanboy that we all know Tom is. I'm not. What? I, I've I've literally played I played Half Life two for maybe an hour or two once, and then I played Black Mesa maybe three or four hours. Yeah. I have no investment in the Half-Life universe or games. I have no nostalgia for any of them. So well, I've, I'm, only, I'm, I've only beat Half-Life like eight times, only... <laughs> Black Mesa three times, oh, Half-Life two like 15 times. Oh, that's including nice. the yeah. episodes. Like, Amateur? <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not much. So I'm excited to hear what you have to say about it next yeah. week as a more unbiased opinion. 
Yeah, I'm pretty unbiased, I think, with this, and I'm going going into it pretty open minded. I'm gonna take it slow though. Uh, probably short sessions still. Um, I've been getting a little bit of VR nausea recently, which is weird because I didn't like the first week of having it. Um, so I don't know. I've also just had general nausea a little bit kind of the past couple of weeks. Mm. I don't know what that's all about, mm. but I'm sure that. Well, you've help. also been doing primary. Oh, you did some other stuff, but like most of your VR was, um, uh, what's it called Beat Saber, Beat though, Saber. right? Uh, most of it has been Beat Saber, yeah. But I have. Oh, played... you've been getting nausea even in Beat Saber? No, not at all in Beat Saber. Oh, okay, okay. But I think that one of the reasons I played mostly Beat Saber and I haven't really played much Pavlov lately is because I've just been a little less yeah. feeling good in general. Makes sense. Ah, well, anyway, we'll, we'll touch back up on this next week. I, I am curious about your take. Um, sure. Tarkov played yeah. some. I spent more money today than I earned, I think, all of last wipe. <laughs> I, I spent 9 million rubles today to get to level 30 and get a money case. Like it was an expensive ass decision because I was impatient and wanted to get to thirty, but it's fine because the game is fucking broke with the way the bitcoins work. Yeah, economy's getting kind of wild. Yeah, interesting. But we had some fun um, rates today. Yes, um, Adam and I went into a room that's locked on interchange. I've never been into, and at the very end of the wipe, like ten minutes left, the time that everyone's trying to typically get out of the mall. A three stack fucking rolls up on us and they don't know we're in there. To the fact where this is a locked room with two different doors, they went to the door we didn't use, so it was still locked. Yeah, so they had so no they idea had, anybody was in there. They were probably like, oh, the door's still locked. Cool, nobody's going to be here. We can loot it. And then yeah. Adam <laughs> mowed the son of a bitch down. That Dude that unlocks door. the door. The door opens. He's staying there in the doorway. I just immediately unload on him. Like, there was probably less than a second between when the door swung open and when I started firing. That Jesus poor guy just Christ. got... That poor guy just didn't know what was coming to him. That's one of those you kind of feel bad for, but at the same time, like, it's just fun and funny. Um, but I've been like, on that, I've been on that side of the coin. Yeah. Yeah, had they went to the other door, like they would have approached it all different. Like, oh, this door's already been unlocked. Yeah, and then all sure of a sudden, you know, you're still here. The... Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that kind of so got we mowed. Ended up, <laughs> we ended up losing the exchange. Adam mowed yeah. down two of the three, and then we being locked in a room with people that have nades on the outside kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we ended up doing losing there. We did some nighttime raids. My first time doing nighttime raids. The first one was really chill until the end. It's still kind of fun. But um, no, that one actually we got out, didn't we? Yeah, we got out. Of that, that was one. really chill. That was around. chill the whole way. Yeah. Our second one was chill, and then we found some new blood. Like there was a level one account running a night raid. Oh no! I don't know if he meant to do the night raid. He probably didn't know. Dude, it was just level one. And, and it was so funny because Eric and I usually play the game not, like, scared, but, like, we we don't tend to, More like, we're, yeah, we, we play kind of slow and chill and stealthy a little bit, you know, taking our time, surviving, you know, that kind of thing. We're not the type to just, like, run in the high PvP areas immediately and, like, what up, let's fight, you know? we're not the robs of the so world the, but we're both at this point in the game we're both pretty financially in the game solid we're good yeah so you know the one time we're like oh i just saw this guy like far off in the distance pretty sure he went to that building let's go get him so we pushed him and we're like where is this guy i didn't see him or whatever turns out he was hiding underneath the stairs because he heard us coming and he didn't want to, I guess he didn't want to uh, just get demolished or whatever. And, and Adam was already I think up he the panicked. stairs. Yeah, I was up at the stairs already and Eric was starting to go up the stairs. And then I just he hear panicked. gunshots and I'm like, where did these come from? I guess the guy just panicked and like fired at Eric with his pistol. Well, what happened is I stared at him. And because that's when I asked Adam, like, are you already upstairs? Because I'm staring at this dude and he's not shooting at me. And I'm thinking it's Adam. And I didn't he's like, realize yeah, I'm he was, already upstairs. I didn't realize you so were I, looking at him. 
Wow. So my instinct was sprint the fuck away. Dude who's not Adam is looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> so he pops me once with a pistol. Uh, he follows me thinking I'm running scared. Little did he know that Adam just literally turned around and was waiting in the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam unloads on evil. the dude. <laughs> well, the, it gets even more rough on the dude because Adam unloads on him, hurts him bad. It, but he lives and gets back into the stairwell. Adam took some shots, so he's healing. While Adam's healing, I'm already back to full health. I storm the fucking stairwell while the dude's crouched in a corner trying to heal. <laughs> so I just jump down the stairs and mow the fucker. <laughs> and that's when we find out he's a level one. Oh. Like, oh, the one time we actually go to pick a fight and hunt some guy down, it just happens to be the level one guy who probably accidentally queued a nighttime raid, not knowing what was going on. He didn't have any night vision goggles. I don't even think he had a flashlight. Dude was just oh, lost in the dark man. by himself, scared, <laughs> level one, not knowing what's going on, and oh, he just gets no. hunted down by these two. It. <laughs> It's okay. Uh, Karma comes back. Yeah, it happens. So, We've all been there, but so dude is dead on a stairwell. Adam goes back upstairs. He's healing. I'm like, okay, whatever. He had a pistol. I grab his pistol. I check his backpack. He had like some water. I'm like, you know, sometimes raids go long. Need some hydration. Whatever. I take it. And then I'm just looking for the rest of his pistol mags. I'm like, I'm taking his pistol. I might as well take his mags. I am stacked in this game. I am looking for mags for a gun. I am not going to shoot, and it's going to make me like 100 rubles. Like, there is no <laughs> reason to do this, but I'm looking for these mags. Because of this, level four, some bitch walks into the stairwell and taps me in the face. <laughs> I had no clue he was there. Just literally just oh. one shot me with shit ammo right in the face. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I only know he's level four because Adam then mowed him down. Yeah, so I <laughs> murdered him. Murdered the man. That was but a no, good. Um, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say a after that I continued on the raid and ended up getting into one of the most fun fights I've ever had in Tarkov. Um, it was just it was just one of those fights where I saw at least one guy sounded like more than one guy. Um, and it was all around this building and it was the exact opposite of the kind of fight me and Eric had in interchange where we're, we're locked in a room with only like two really small entrances. So the fight has to happen in this little choke point. Like there's no, you know, somebody has to peek and that's it. It's going to be there and you both know it. Um, those are my least favorite kind of fights in Tarkov because that just, it's mostly, you know, you get the peeker's advantage thing. If there's desync, it gets weird. And it's just kind of one of those who can aim at the head the fastest or who decides to push at the right time. This was a warehouse building with multiple entrances on each side. So there's tons of room to flank and different ways in and out of the building. And somehow I was actually playing well. <laughs> And I'm like, I take shots at this guy. I get some good hits on him, but he's not dead. So I flank around the other side of the building. I see another guy. Okay, so it's a squad of two or whatever. I, I shoot at him a little bit. Um, and I think I see like, it seems like there's three or four people. But after it was all said and done, we had all these like flanks and ex exchange of gunfire and grenades. I ended up killing the two guys and it was just those two. And they were both high, higher level for this wipe. They were like level 44 and 47, which is pretty decent. You know, I'm, I'm level 30 something. Um, and I've played a decent amount, particularly at the beginning of the wipe. But it was just this, it was such a fun fight because it wasn't one of those, it was just over immediately and that's it. It was prolonged. There was a lot of flanking involved on both parties. I thought it was like four people because it was two really good players who knew how to reposition and and do all that kind of stuff. And I was just so happy to be doing the same thing. So I don't know how many people they thought they were fighting against, but it was just such a cool, interesting fight that actually lasted some time. And I came out on top. I got both of them. They both had really good gear on. So I was able to, to load up on nice armor and a nice gun and, and get it out of the raid. But it was such a memorable fight because it was just... I don't know. Nothing stupid happened. It was just all, Ooh. you know, players playing fairly well and, you know, 
trying to outflank each other and outplay each other. It was fun. Your thinking in fights, though, has been getting way more tactical. Like when we were on our interchange raid, we actually saw that three stack when they entered the mall. Mm -hmm. And Adam like took some shots, missed. And then instead of doing what a lot of novice players will do and be like, well, I'm just going to keep sitting there pinking, his immediate thought was, I'm going to reposition this other part of the store because it's one of the big stores. Like, and then try to get a different view angle on him from a different area. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't re peek where the sons of bitches know where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> I, I learned that, and that stepped my game up so much is don't re peek the same angle ever. Like that just gets you killed all the time. And it took me forever to know that because I'm I've never been like a good shooter player. I just kind of jump in and do whatever. You know, things like knowing when to shoot and when to just not pick a fight, that's huge. And then knowing when to reposition and flank and not to peek the same angle a bunch of times, not to stay in one spot too long. Like all that stuff adds up. And it's been it's been good. Re peaks have probably been fifty percent of my deaths in Tarkov. Yeah. Repeaks have been about 50% of my deaths in every game. Yeah. That's that's it. Yeah, I'm still uh, I mean I'm still bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not good at the game. My aim sucks and <laughs> like uh what he was talking about where I took a bunch of shots at these guys and missed a bunch of them and didn't I get I wasn't going to talk <laughs> about that part of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, they were like sprinting, so I'm trying to lead the shot, but I don't know how much I need to lead the shot and I don't. I don't even know if I was hitting him or not. Um, yeah, like I thought I got a headshot on one guy, but apparently I didn't because he didn't drop. So <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't get this. I was watching Rob play PUBG. Some bitch had like a, I think it was like a three X scope, shooting at fuckers from like two hundred meters with an M4, and he is getting probably fifty percent of the hits, and he is leading like five body links in front of these fuckers. <laughs> and this wasn't like trial and error. From go, he was wrapped in about the right amount of lead. I'm like, how in the fuck do you get to this point? He doesn't <laughs> play a lot of PUBG. Yeah. Like it's I, because Rob is a goddamn FPS surgeon. That's why. <laughs> because you can drop him into any game. And as long as you've got a ranged weapon in some form of fucking crosshair or scope, he's a god. Like that's it. That's that's all there is to it. <laughs> There's only one other one person I think. Oh, actually, I think there's probably two people in our community I think is better. JD and Shaq. Shaq, Shaq is, is a, a monster. monster. <laughs> Shaq isn't goddamn human. He's just uh, he's just an FPS demigod. That's all there is to Shaq. <laughs> like, I want to see him in Tarkov. Just because, <laughs> like, right. give him where ammo makes a difference, too, and just get him on god-tier ammo. Holy shit, dude. I think he would just like wreck Fox, but you yeah, know, he'd be the next um, mark for sure. Yeah. But, um, neither here nor there. It's Tarkov. Um, today was probably the most fun I've had with Tarkov since a while. about the beginning of the wipe. Yeah. Cause the beginning of the wipes are fun for everyone. I think everyone enjoys a wipe, mm -hmm. which I hope is a mechanism that they keep. I want them to keep wiping even after the game releases. Agreed. I don't it's think nice to get it fresh. It, I'm not sure. Everything's like, always subject to change. Yeah, and I think Wipes played a very critical role in Tarkov development of its early access. We need to recheck the balance at the start of the game. Yeah. However, I think it's became a mechanic that the players have learned to love. Yeah. Like most games, people don't like the wipe. But I think this is an example where people actually thrive for a wipe. That people actually stop playing because a wipe hasn't happened yet. Yeah, people get bored, I think, over time once they do too well and they feel like they don't have any more goals to pursue in the game. Like, the way they're developing this game right now, I think they can already say it's a full release and then just call it a live game. Because they are doing better releases on this as a live game than actual games that try to be a live game. So, if you look historically at long-running games and kind of the problems they run into with Endgame... Look at basically any MMO, right? It's a constant treadmill. People, you know, eventually they're like, well, fine, I'm just not going to play until the new expansion releases, burn all that content in a couple months, and then drop the game until the next thing comes out next year, right? That's basically how WoW is played today by the high-level people who are in endgame plus content. 
Um, yeah. I think what, what Tarkov does and really what wipes do is they ensure that you don't really get to that content treadmill kind of issue. Uh, or they help incentivize against that, right? Because you know, all right, next wipe happens and it'll happen at some point, you know, in, in the next six months. I'm going to have a chance to start over and try to do something else, right? Try to play a little bit different, uh, you know, try different alternative means or new routing or, or like new, new ways or, or, you know, forms of quest completion to get, you know, I'm going to need to get this loadout in this economy and build my base in this way and optimize for these things. Uh, and it lets you try out that roguelite sort of, how am I going to optimize my play this run, but over a long live game? Uh, it gets you out of that MMO problem of I've run out of content, what now issue. And especially when there's rebalancing of weapons. So when you're going through a wipe and a weapon or an attachment styles have been rebalanced, what you ran last wipe might not be what you run this wipe. Like yeah. I was an AK main last wipe. I think I've ran three white or three raids with AKs. I have been a fucking eight R fiend this wipe. That's been my entire MO is eight R's. And before this wipe, I only ran them when I was a scav. So like, yeah, it's, it absolutely gives you fresh new ways to be able to play. And I hope they keep that going. Otherwise this will be a game. I will, I mean, it inevitably will be anyway, but it'll be a game. I drop sooner rather than later if they don't keep that mechanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because I in in a game like Tarkov, it's super important when you've got um, like stratified um, progression, right? Like if I start Tarkov right now, I'm behind everyone else. I am way, way behind on the curve. And with MMOs, it's, it's the same way, right? Like if I wanted to play World of Warcraft with Gina, unless she rolls a new character, it's going to be a long ass while before I get to where she's running, right? long ass while but tarkov it means that all i gotta do is just wait till the next wipe uh jump in and i can play with my friends and as long as i play as as much as you guys do i'm well, with the pack. um i want to be clear you, yes you, no. i think you have this i think you have this perception of tarkov also being skill-based like matchmaking kind of shit no you can run with no. us right now and you'd be fine yeah, yeah. as well no, as I, we can I, bring you in stuff yeah but like as far as my incentives go and the progression, right? It's not like Tarkov is less of a daunting task than needing to get from zero to max level in World of Warcraft, right? Yes. Oh, it's yes. Way less of a daunting task because I know eventually everyone's going to be reset to the Back same to level, you. regardless of whether they want to or not. It's just going to happen. The only thing you get early wipe. And like I don't even have this now. My my con's pretty good. Is you get the security that people aren't going to be running like god tier ammo all the time. Yeah. And that you're not going to get one shot out of nowhere. Like you're still going to get one shot a lot with like head eyes kind of shit. I start but, but there is like legit ammos where like I wear on Gen Four or Class Four armor a lot. I die wearing Class Four armor if this ammo hits me. I don't see it often, but like it can happen. Early wipe, you're not going to see it at all. Uh, you, on who you, up you might see it some. People but... grind out the top level gear like the first couple days. Like the hardcore players, they will do that. But it's not the whole, it's not the majority of the player base. And you also have to yes. take into account too that as new people come in to play the game, if they're not coming in at the beginning of a wipe, you're, you're not you're not always running into high level people like not everybody yes. is like tom said everybody is going to be ahead um maybe most people will be ahead but that doesn't mean yeah. everybody's going to i mean we killed a level one today and we killed a level 14 right after that you know i, I run into people with low gear too even now even with the economy this particular wipe cycle of tarkov has been kind of messed up economy wise because of the bitcoin stuff so everybody has way more money than what n normal people would have at this point in a wipe. Uh, so you see a lot more high-level gear this wipe than normal. But even at the end of the last wipe cycle of the game, towards the end where most of the hardcore player base are just running whatever they want because they, they have virtually unlimited money, 
I was still running into low-geared people. They're not as common as the first day of a new wipe cycle, obviously, but, I mean, you still... You, you always still have a chance. Like, it's, it's not one of those things where you just can't play because, well, it's in the middle of a wipe. I guess I'll wait until they decide to wipe yeah. everybody's progress. I think that's well, a little bit of a fallacy. Well, and because of the way that Tarkov runs, I'm like, unless a son of a bitch is rocking, like, a kill a mass kind of bullshit, most people, if you do perfect placement, you still can win a fight. Even with the standard PS ammo, you can still win a fucking fight. Mm -hmm. It's going to be harder. But it's not like it's just impossible. Shoot them in thing. the face. Yes, shoot them in the, the face. The face you is win usually fights. exposed. Yes. And if you have good ammo, it doesn't matter what they're wearing on their face. Isn't that yeah. kind of a, a maxim for all first person shooters? Yeah. If you shoot them no. in the face, you can generally well, win a fight. No, because not all first person shooters are headshot deaths. <laughs> all right. That's yeah. true. I guess it if helps you're though. Overwatch. Clicking heads helps no matter what, but still. <laughs> yes, it always helps. I don't know a shooter where clicking the head is detrimental. <laughs> um, Cyberpunk tabletop, Dead Space. That's not a shooter, really. But... Okay, fuck you guys. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, either way, yes, Adam and I love Tarkov. I I think it's been expressed a lot here. Yeah. Um, shall we move on? Yeah. No. Uh, All right. uh, Beat Saber. Beat Saber's great. Beat Saber. I beat, beat a new Saber. song. I beat my new, uh, like, goal song or whatever. Finally. Nice. Yeah, let's so you try. need to find a new one. I do. Saeed. I need to find a new one. I was, you beat me to it. I was going to say, and don't say Saeed, Tom, because I'm not ready for that yet. But <laughs> there he goes. I'll check it out, but there's no way. If you were struggling Actually, with it and you just now beat it, I'm not going to be able to do it. Um, Straight up. I found out uh so i i need to look at my song list again because i just grabbed a bunch of new shit um i actually found a bridge so one of the reasons that saeed was so fucking difficult is because it was just a cut above the rest in terms of difficulty mm. like when i was playing other songs saeed was just at this impossible level that i hadn't been eased into like there wasn't a whole lot I mm -hmm. could use to practice because it was Saeed or something easy that I'd beaten a lot of. Um, I found a bridge song that was actually between my standard and what Saeed was. And if I were to grind that, I would have been in a way better position for beating Saeed way earlier. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I've got, so I, need I, I need to, yeah, I need to work on like a list of songs and trainings. And I've been thinking yeah. about this for a while this isn't necessarily an announcement. It's not really what I'm planning on doing, but I've got I an love idea. this. I have an idea. If you really, really want to see it, tell me about it, I guess. I'm thinking about Beat Saber coaching, but not like one on one. Like, I just make lists of, hey, do you need to work on repeating patterns? Do you need to work on, uh, you know, diagonals? Do you need to work on other things? Well, here are the maps and the map IDs to do that. Do you need difficulty steps? You need to go from here to here to here to here. And once you beat this thing, you're ready for this pack of songs. Um, I think that could be helpful because I think I've put enough hours into Beat Saber to know where those things should land in terms of progression. Uh, oh, hey, Tom, uh, uh, just so you know, 72 Pink Connector is this uh, video game podcast and YouTube channel and stuff. What? And no, they those guys really some videos. So no. maybe sometime they could have a video explaining some packs for progressions for things like that. No, those guys suck. I would never release any content for them. They're toxic. Okay, okay. They go into Tarkov and kill level one players. <laughs> <laughs> we hunted them down accidentally. <laughs> Dude, we viciously <laughs> ran that son of a bitch down. We did. We just didn't know. We didn't know he was just a support. He was just a boy. Like that. <laughs> Oh, it's just a no. Child. Seriously though, um, I, I think I li love where you're going with that. I, yeah. You should make you should make like I a think that would be a video for people for the community of like, I am a Beat Saber God. Here's <laughs> what you could do to be me. <laughs> Break it down by steps. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I did find uh, and also also on Beat Saber, I found a bunch of new stuff, bunch of. Great new songs thanks to uh, Beast Saber, which has map curators and rankers and raiders. 
So if you want like ranked and rated maps that, you know, hey, this thing is great and it's got great readability, but average flow and really cool patterns and super unique stuff. Um, then yeah, Beast Saber lets you get those kind of like in-depth map reviews and then organize them by curator score, which is really cool. I found things that were super fucking difficult that I failed a lot of songs yesterday. Uh, and now I've got more stuff to work on post Saeed. So the grind cool. doesn't stop. <laughs> I am now back on the Beat Saber grind and I've got a host of new songs to beat. I'm going to need that list on my yep. desk by Friday. Uh, I have, I, I just ran a backup today because I always keep my custom songs backed up just in case. Uh, I've got 12 gigs of music. That's how you know you were in the early days of Beat Saber. Is when you're backing up your Actually fucking mods. Actually downloading the songs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's 12 gigs. Okay. I need to put it on like uh, an external drive or put it in cloud backups or something. Just because right now it's on a single hard drive and that scares the hell out of me. <laughs> single source of failure. Yep. Ah. Uh, all right. Everyone, keep an eye out. Tom's going to release some YouTube content for us because we're lazy bastards. We're going to make Tom do it. Anyway, um, uh, what else we got? Um, any other games any we want to get games? to before we get to these news? I, I did have, mobile shit. Nothing to talk one. about, really. What you got? Oh, yes, you do. Yeah. So, uh, okay. I remember last year I bought Persona 5, and then I stopped playing it because I, I literally just stopped using my PS4. Um so I bought Persona 4 Golden because it was like Persona got released on Steam and everyone lost their shit. And apparently it was a really good port. So I was like, yeah, yeah. Um, and then Renee was telling me Persona 4 is actually like a fan favorite, uh, even compared to 5, which is critically acclaimed. So I bought Persona 4. Um, I'm running into this issue where if a day at work is particularly hard, I don't want to play anything in depth, right? I don't want to grind on dota like i just want to play something chill but sometimes i don't even want to play something active like i just want to hit a button and watch stuff play out i needed a jrpg i needed a turn-based rpg to go through uh so i picked up persona 4 and yeah so far it's really good um it's not it's not a cliche jrpg it is super unique it is really really cool uh as far as like story content goes i'm not super far into it i'm a couple hours uh but god damn i am loving this so far and that soundtrack just fucking slaps there is nothing cliche about the persona soundtrack it is great so, so you're digging yeah. it okay i'm i'm loving the hell out of it like it's still jrpg fair it's got turn-based battles there are enemies with weaknesses uh, but like some of the subject matter that they're they're diving into is kind of hardcore, uh, just like just like my intro into Persona Five. Um, yeah, I'll I'll let you know how it goes. But uh, so far, I'm really liking this thing. I mean, Persona is have... great. You brought up like Persona Five was more critically acclaimed, but this is like a fan favorite. Um, it makes me think a lot, and I think there's a lot of parallels in weird ways to Monster Hunter and Monster Hunter World. Yeah, where Monster Hunter World was critically acclaimed, I, I do think it actually was ended up being the fan favorite. But like Try was up until then. Yep, and it's because like these games are very hard to get into. Their community bases are fucking rabid. They're uh, Japanese as hell style games. And then five slash world came out and it was widely accepted into the Western hemisphere where the others were not. I I wanted a JRPG, but I didn't want a cliche JRPG. Uh, like Donkey, Donkey likes to say about Dragon Warrior, if you were to make a JRPG factory, the default setting is Dragon Warrior. Right? Uh, Dragon Quest? Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior, whatever. It's the okay. same uh, game. Make it, make it sure we're... Dragon Quest yeah. is Dragon Warrior in Japan. It's it's a game, dragon anime characters. That's the game. Yeah. Um, but Persona is absolutely not that. It is extremely unique. Uh, even like between games, it's extremely unique. Um, it's all kind of got, like, you know what you're signing up for when you get into Persona, but it's not like copy pasted. It is, they follow a theme 
but it is like each game is in its own world and unto itself. So if you don't know anything about Persona, you do not have to start with Persona 1. Persona 4 and Persona 5 are completely disconnected worlds. Uh, like there are similarities and they share like uh, some of the same things between the game. Like there's this place called the Velvet Room. There will always be a Velvet Room in a Persona game. That's a given. Um, and you will always have a mix between hanging out with the boys and doing dungeon crawling in spooky places. Like that's going to be a staple of the game. But as far as the story and characters go, 100% unique and isolated. So you can start anywhere in the series. You don't have Very to know anything Final about Fantasy the game. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, yeah um, when you get some more time in it, I'm curious to hear what you think. I've never played Personas. I've always heard great things about Personas. Dobby was a Persona guy. I have a coworker who has put hundreds of hours into five. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm curious to hear your take once you get a little deeper. Yeah, I like it so far. Yeah. Very nice. It it ain't light. It ain't a light, airy RPG, though. Like, it's got some heavy shit. And it is Persona. It's always um, high school drama plus super deep, dark bullshit. But. (laughs) Yeah. Well said. (laughs) Yeah. Either way. Let's get in some news, fellas. News. No. Fine. And I want to say that because um, we just hit on it. Monster Hunter Rise is out. Um, so they are doing... Well, I don't want to say because it it's not quite right. They're doing a Monster Hunter World-esque kind of release where it is coming out on Switch only right now, but there will be a PC release later, which was similar to how World did it. So in other words, it means I'm, gonna, I'm about to buy it on Switch and then I'm going to yeah. rebuy it on PC to play with everyone else. Uh, Dark Soul Invader in our community has been posting some uh, video of him and some of the things he's been doing in the game in the Monster Hunter channel. If you're interested, go to Rolls on Demand, get you the role, get in the channel. He's been posting some content. Looks good. I mean, it, it's Monster Hunter. It looks it's, like Monster Hunter, and I want Monster Hunter. So, it yes. looks beautiful for being on the Switch. Holy shit. I mean, it's Monster Hunter. It's it, Monster Hunter. Is a, Monster Hunter is a pretty game. But it's pretty in a way that isn't graphically intense. Yeah. They choose an art style that's art not going to crank you. Yeah. Yep. Nintendo, oh, I was about to say Nintendo's a toys for this, but it's not Nintendo. But it's the same thing Nintendo does. They make their games pretty without being graphically intense. Yep. But either way, it's out on Switch. If you like Monster Hunter, go get you some. Speaking of the Switch, um, rumor mill is they're going to have new NVIDIA chips in a new version of the Switch at some point this year. Uh, this would be the quote-unquote Switch Pro that keeps getting hinted at, rumored around, blah 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 Nothing official, just kind of rumor mill stuff, but if they do it, who knows? Maybe uh, Nintendo will have a current-gen system that does 1080. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I could not throw that at him. Uh, oh, man. But don't worry, don't worry. The the Nintendo Switch online service will still be as useless as it is today. So that won't be changing on you. If it makes feeling better, the PS3, Vita, and PSP services are almost going to be as useful as Nintendo's because they're shutting down. That's right. I'm saying Nintendo service might as well be shut down because that's about as useful as it is. Anyway, yeah. but for real, PlayStation shutting down the Vita, PS3, and PSP. Um... PSP and PS3 make sense. Um, I could have seen them keeping the Vita around a little longer because that was their indie darling console before the Switch came out. Yeah, but, but I mean, the PS3, you're, you got PS5 out. Yes, you're going you're gonna to stop support of that. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of kind of an FYI. If you've got games that you haven't downloaded on, on your PlayStation, you know, my, if, if you still have a PS3 and you want stuff on it, might want to go download that sooner rather yeah. than later. All right. Next up, Final Fantasy XI reboot was canceled. Yep. That's it. Um, was that no heart lost? Was eleven one of the games that people liked? It was no. uh, the first online one. What? No. Oh, people oh, loved oh. that arc. Final I, Fantasy XI meant, was fucking huge. I didn't think a lot of people liked it because a lot of people didn't have the proper... Con- I shouldn't say a lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people didn't get into it because the fucking PS2 um, uh, network adapter requirement bullshit for it. 
because the PS2 natively didn't go online. Uh, so keep in mind that it was also simultaneously, uh, simultaneously released for the 360, I want to say. Like an upgraded version was released for the 360. Um, okay. So, yeah, and it had a big presence on PC. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I don't... Like it, it was, it I've was never well really loved. heard much of anyone playing that. It was well loved for the time. It was definitely, it wasn't nearly as popular as 14, but it was up there. Because that came out of the era of where Guild Wars was big, WoW yeah. was still was still really cutting its teeth in what now we call classic WoW. Yeah. And at that point, RuneScape was still a, I mean, RuneScape still is, but RuneScape was a juggernaut that people knew of. So, like, yeah. I guess that's also part of why I never really knew anyone that played it, because I knew everyone I knew played one of those three. Yeah. I jumped to World of Warcraft. Basically, if you didn't like World of Warcraft, there weren't too many options for you, and Final Fantasy was one of them. I don't know. There were Guild Wars and RuneScape. I did both those. I love Guild Wars. Fucking love that shit. Guild Wars was great. Guild Wars is still great. And if you want to play base Guild Wars 2, yeah, that's free now. So, uh, whoops. <laughs> but Just um, eat it, Adam. Even I played Guild Wars a little bit. Yeah, that was a good time. Love that game. Anyway, next up. Um, this one hits close to home because I think a lot of gaming communities are based around this. Microsoft is putting a bid in to buy our Discord. I say bid is in like it's up for sale, but in general, they, they're trying to buy Discord. Mm. $10 billion. That's Holy a lot of billions. fuck that price tag. <sighs> I don't know how I feel about this. Are they going to try to make it Skype, like integrated with Skype? Because that oh would be God. the worst thing like, in the world. I I just <laughs> whatever they do, they should just leave it the leave fuck Leave it alone. alone. No, there there are some things Discord needs done. Like Discord yeah, needs to stop but... being a fucking Chrome app on desktop. Uh, they're not going to change that. Are you nuts? There, there's no way they're going to change that. I'm not saying they're going to, but I'm saying it needs to be done. <laughs> it needs to stop being a fucking Chrome app. So I actually disagree with that uh, for one very important reason. So right now, when they push out an update, it goes everywhere all the time and works on everything without a hitch. If it Does becomes it? a native app, I no longer use Discord. Is what that means. Um, if it, are you if sure it becomes, because if what it all becomes, noise canceling stuff do you have right now? Well, that's my point exactly. Right. So mo like. 95% of it works exactly how it's supposed to on whatever platform. Um, as soon as it becomes a local app and it doesn't run on Linux, right? I'm either going to use the web version or I'm just not. Uh, like it's fine to have the web version. I'm just saying that son of a bitch runs heavy. The, the, whole, the whole reason why things like Slack and Discord and uh, VS Code and all these other fucking electron apps get like updates and work everywhere all the time really really fucking well uh is because yeah they're just packaged up websites sure it's heavy it's really inefficient everyone really loves local apps until they realize that local apps honestly fucking suck and putting the same features everywhere is a way more important metric than uh saving your ram if, if it's using too much ram you don't have enough i said it get no, more ram because Okay, here's the thing you're Just also download more RAM. I don't say you're also neglecting like, fastest download more RAM.com. Discord <laughs> does Discord keeps it also that way because Discord's a smaller team. If someone like Microsoft gets it, they could put enough people behind it to actually natively I, support I just, shit. Uh, I just don't get why why we even need all this shit. Like IRC was good enough for anyone. And like, oh my god, we could just make IRC channels for everything. And you see, call you do it on the telephone. You do a mocking voice for this, but in reality, you can just use your real voice. I mean, that sounds like a you take. <laughs> no, I totally get it, and I, I do agree. I have made these same arguments, but honestly, after, after what seems like a lifetime of developing software for public and not for public, pushing out features fast and simply is going to beat optimization every fucking day when it comes to user experience. Techies yeah. don't like to hear it because, oh my God, you mean that every application should take eight gigs of RAM? If that means that features get released to everybody simultaneously, yeah. And that's just reality. I think that sometimes that <laughs> needs to not be the reality. Because just imagine if fucking games did that. They do. 
They <laughs> do don't. You know what, do you They're, know what game engines are? Do you know how game engines a, actually do some optimization? No, it's not they just, don't. Have you ever used anything packaged in Unity? Tarkov yes. specifically. That's why they Tarkov is a mess. They are not efficient. They are absolutely not efficient. But you know what? Tarkov is able to make super quick updates and get stuff out to people fast, even if it means they've got to bounce the servers no, every but, other but hour. But what I'm getting at is I'm not saying the game engine itself does. I'm saying the game engine does it for different platforms. That engine does it for multiple platforms. It's actually just running itself in a byte-coded VM. Godot works the same way. No you one actually... Much no one actually compiles down to the metal it's basically just a shitty vm that's the only thing game engines do today is yeah but you know what shitty v you know the purpose of a vm is so that the shit runs on every system yeah it what do you does think translations browser your si the browser does literally the exact same thing you you're it's saying soft, that it's, it's heavy <laughs> you've had issues with it i've had issues with it gotta fix this shit it, it anyway works. anyway it works Oh, Either way, it's fucking work. They need to change. <laughs> anyway, if um, Microsoft buys Discord. I just hope it. They don't try to do something stupid with it. The the one silver lining Skype we have is, an is awful Microsoft. Program. Microsoft did buy GitHub, and they've largely left it the fuck alone. If they do the same thing with Discord, and they just say, "Hey, we're buying you. You have funding now. Just keep doing the same shit you were. Maybe give people Xbox Games Pass for free." Or with Nitro, like, all right. No complaints also, here. Also, I do want to call out, I don't want this to be a retrospective of, oh, Microsoft started trying stupid shit. Dude, Discord did stupid shit, too. Oh, so, like, I, I don't want to get that out there right now. Discord game store? Like, who <laughs> on earth thought that was going to be a good idea? Like, everyone looked at they that. They just needed said, well, something so stupid. people would buy Nitro. Uh, and then, they were just like, anything we could think of. Do, do you know you know what why I bought Nitro? Because they gave up on the stupid shit and they said, "Hey, we like to eat too, and we don't want to go out of business." And I said, "All right, here you go." <laughs> like it's literally the only thing the company would say, and even even fucking Reddit did this. They said, "Hey, servers cost us this amount of money. Can you please buy this amount of gold and cosmetic bullshit that doesn't change anything to help keep us in business?" And the community largely responded with buying stupid things that don't matter to keep reddit in business right now in retrospect maybe that wasn't such a good idea uh but you know it works if the company was just transparent they say we're literally not giving you anything you're just helping us like parsec parsec doesn't require a payment i pay them 50 bucks a year because they asked me too nicely yeah, yeah. But either way digression hella digression um <laughs> yeah a little bit so what was oh yeah so multiplayer and free-to-play games looking for groups and party chat and xbox live are now no longer going to be gold features but just generic xbox features yep this is really so, cool microsoft's been doing some slow changes anyway because it used to be like in general xbox live was pay and then it was like well you know what gold is a thing and you could talk to one person but you can't talk to parties you can't play online and now well if the game's free you can play online and you know what you can go in and talk to all the friends you fucking want for free so it's just a really good fucking move it's a yeah. it's a customer friendly move it's great but you it's love fantastic and honestly up until like the last two years Xbox was the only place I felt that there was actually a really strong gaming community on the online scene. And I mean that in a way of friends together. Yeah. Like I felt that like the way Xbox live worked fostered friendships playing across multiple games at the same time, just talking, hanging out better than any other platform until discord Agreed. really hit discord changed it for PC. Uh, you know what? Yeah. We might actually, really did. there could be a huge benefit to Microsoft in buying Discord if they integrated it with the Xbox platform. Yes. If yes. you could just be on Xbox, hanging out in the 72 PC Discord, playing Xbox Rocket League crossplay, that's yeah. kind of a game changer. <laughs> that, that's huge. I didn't and especially that, with I Game Pass. Yeah. yeah. Like they, Microsoft's doing those moves. I, I could be mistaken, but 
wasn't one of didn't one of the early promotions of Game Pass actually give you Discord Nitro too? I think Discord Nitro gave you Game Pass at some point. Because I, I know for sure that one of the early promotions uh, for Game Pass is you got two free months of Spotify Premium too. Yeah. And I want to think Discord Nitro was in there somehow. It's all fucking incestuous. They're all giving each other for free. You get <laughs> well, EA Play and Spotify and HBO Go and Crunchyroll and... Uh, I don't know, fucking Pornhub Premium or something all loaded into one subscription. What the hell? Uh, we're not going to talk about what that last one is. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, we went on Xbox. Cool. Anyway, Drary is officially no, exceeded you, 35 you missed a million story. copies. You missed a story that's also close to home. Um, okay. World of Warcraft has made changes uh, to their purchasable oh, game, yeah. pa- game time options. So, before... And how I I can't say most people, but how a lot of people would play World of Warcraft is they would buy 30 days of game time at a time. Uh, yeah, they they now uh, Blizzard has said, no, nah, you can't do that. The minimum is now 60 days because what people would do is they would pay for 30 days, blast through all the content they cared about and get rid of it. And Blizzard said, no, nah, you can now buy 60 days or buy the recurring subscriptions. Uh, and that's that's about it. 30, 90, and 180 day options have been removed. All of the subscription stuff is uh, is there. And they said, oh yeah, we ran a survey and it turns out that, you see, people just really like the 60 day option, but they don't really care about the other ones. So we just got rid of them. Because, you know, keeping those options on the table was really, really, really costly. Having that little radio button that said, oh, 30 days, 15 bucks instead of 60 uh, like 60 days for $30, it, that was really breaking the bank. So I'm really glad they got rid of it. Because, you know, Activision Blizzard is a tiny indie dev house, and they just they need could really the use optimization. The and yeah. yeah, especially because the, the CEO, when <laughs> when he got cut loose, only made like, what, 30, 40 mil on, in that golden parachute? It's really unfortunate. I, you hate to see it. I hope so his family's is, okay. The move is dog shit. Uh, but I will say I do think a decent amount of the players are buying larger ones because sales and bundles with things that come with larger ones. So I like there's still do things where get a um, six month. It'll actually be the price of a six month, but you'll get this mount, these items, this, that, this and the other. So I think a lot of people are doing those. So I don't think that that metric's necessarily wrong. But by pulling them like what you said. It costs you more money to pull it than to leave it. You're being yeah. ass hats. Yeah. It's rent seeking. It's goddamn World of Warcraft rent seeking, which they've done before. Also, keep in mind that there is the ability to buy game time with in game resources, and a lot of people were making use of that. Now that it's more expensive, it's going to take you extra grinding time to be able to buy the bigger one. So, this is going to yes, get rid of a have... free revenue channel for some but... people. I, well, it, you had 30 days to grind 30 days worth. Now you have 60 days to grind 60 days worth. It's really the same grind. It's just over a different period. Yeah. But are people going to save that up or are they not? Because there's other things they could spend it on, right? They I mean, they already were and... saving it up. It's just yeah, if that's the way they're playing it. it how hard is it to save, uh, to save 15 bucks? Pretty easy. Well, 30, at least in game currency. Yeah, Here comes yeah. the clarity. Tokens aren't changing, but does that mean that tokens you can still buy one month at a time? And the change is only for prepaid cards if you still sub for one month and cancel. You oh, yeah. Still so you, for a month you can you can subscribe for one month and then cancel, but it's subscribing for the recurring, which people will tend to forget. Case it's in point, idea I would subscribe to Final Fantasy month. 14 for a year and I played a month. I'm bad with money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You 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 are you are the person that they want, man. You yeah, exactly. are the person they fucking want. I I, I am the reason. People like me are the reason why Blizzard is making this change. Same with Dota Plus. They yeah. want Dota Plus to exist. That way people start playing Dota and then they stop and forget to cancel it. Yeah. But either way, wow, they're doing things. In reality, it's probably not going to cost many people much more money. But if you are a one per one month and out, 
use the sub option and make sure to cancel your shit. You're on top of it anyway. Um, Traria, they sold 35 million copies across all platforms. This game Damn. released like over a decade ago. How yeah. in the fuck is it still selling like this? There's they also, st- um, they like got the number one spot on like the Steam 250 for like highest rated games or something. I, I didn't include that expressly in the news because I wasn't sure how they were calculating that metric. But hey, they're they're up there. It's one of the most loved games on Steam. I love I love the game. It was and a good what game. also it's got me is the last update happened, and then Starbound started to catch fire. All of a sudden, the last update wasn't the last update, and they're like, fuck this, they're not taking our fucking shine. And they released a yo-yo update, as I like to call it. <laughs> and, like, they've released so many updates after they officially stopped support. Such a fucking good game. They deserve everything they've gotten. But, at the same time, fuck, that game's old! Yep. It's great, but it's old! Um, And I have, have heard, and I need to play it, that... um. What, damn it, what's the Nordic ass game right now that everyone's Valheim. playing? Val- Valheim. Yeah. That that is a lot like Terraria. So those of you who like Terraria and you want something a little new, take a look. Um, also, next up are two new news articles we already talked about. Dota, new player experience. It's great. It's awesome. Go play Dota. Everyone should. I need more people to play with. If anyway. you would like to play literally the worst game on the planet and hate yourself, play some Dota. We'll be on later Dude, tonight. I've been having such a good time with that game. Such Dota. a good fucking time. I'm going to play some Dota, but I fucking hate it. Love it. Anyway, um, that's all we got for you. What we initially precast talked about having as a quick show turned out to be kind of a long one. So thanks for sticking with uh, us. Yeah. Um, those of you on Twitch, thank you. Uh, we have YouTube, which you'll be able to get Tom's coaching um, video when he gets that up there for Beat Saber. And that is it'll probably be a YouTube. text post. Let's be real. If we um also put our podcast there, so you can watch it there. Um, if you're watching there, we do this live every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Fuck time zones are wait. What time? At Two. in the fucking evening. Okay, we do it on Twitch.tv slash 72 Pin Connector. <laughs> Uh, we have a Discord full of awesome fucking people. You should go there and join it. You're like, well, Eric, how do we do that? Well, you go to send it to pickconnector.com and you get everything. You get our merch, you get our Discord, you get our Twitch, we get our YouTube. Just go there and go to places. It helps. Um, yeah, and man. New, mer- new merch is coming. We're just waiting on the store to be updated. Yeah. We've everything done our Everything is part. submitted. All the art's done. The, the art for the actual clothing itself, like the designs for the clothing is done. We're just waiting on the shop to get all swapped over with assets and everything, and we can start selling the new stuff. They're slow, but bear with us. It's coming. But that's all I got. You guys got anything to add this week? Um, no. I encourage you to try the tandoori chicken. Eat ramen. And yeah, ramen. Uh, (laughs) I'm getting off here, and I'm figuring out if I'm doing dead or payday too. So... Anyway, that's all we got for you guys this week. So, until next week, game on. See you, everybody.